A while ago, I saw a post on Derek Lowe's blog in the pipeline and was immediately hooked. Researchers found a so far unknown type of crosslinking in proteins, forming bonds between lysine and cysteine. Why is this so exciting? It's a pretty fundamental characteristic of proteins that has been overlooked for decades. Also, these crosslinks are sensitive to redox reactions, creating a new possibility for the regulation of protein function. Of course, this discovery doesn't revolutionize the way we think about proteins. But it is significant news that is worth talking about. Researchers wanted to study an enzyme of Neisseria gonorrhea called transaldolase, or in short, NGTAL. Therefore, they recombinantly produced the protein, and then they encountered a problem. The produced enzyme wasn't active. But a reduced form of the enzyme was active, and that led to a discovery which they didn't expect. It led to the discovery of a covalent crosslink between cysteine and lysine. This crosslink has an important impact on a protein's 3D structure. Also, as a reversible bond, it can serve as a regulatory switch for enzyme function and is the only known covalent switch besides disulfide bonds. But back to NGTAL. The obvious suspects for its redox sensitive behavior have been its three cysteines. But just one of them was found to be essential for the redox regulations, so it couldn't be because of a disulfide bond. Also, no intermolecular bond to a cysteine residue of another enzyme was observed. So it had to be a new kind of interaction, and X-ray structures of NGTAL's oxidized state revealed a crosslink between a cysteine and a lysine, with an unidentified atom in the middle. This atom connecting the two amino acids later turned out to be oxygen. Before we come to the biological implications, I want to talk a bit about the chemistry. Most interactions in proteins are of non-covalent nature, like hydrogen bonds and ionic interactions. Only disulfide and isopeptide bonds are covalent, and of these, only disulfide bonds are reversible and suitable for regulatory functions. Now another bond joins this club, again with participation of a cysteine residue. To form a NOS bridge, a cysteine residue reacts with the lysine residue, with a reactive oxygen species or molecular oxygen as oxidizer. When a second cysteine residue joins in, again oxidized by a ROS or oxygen, a SONOS bridge is formed. The mechanism is unknown, but the authors of the paper proposed three possibilities. Firstly, the oxidation of the thiolate to a thiohydroperoxy species then a direct attack of the lysine's nitrogen at the alpha oxygen of the peroxy cysteine, with water as a leaving group. The second possibility is the formation of the NOS bridge through a sulfenic acid intermediate, either by oxidation of the cysteine to the same thiohydroperoxy acid as in the first mechanism, and then reaction to amine oxide and sulfenic acid or by concerted oxidation of lysine and cysteine to hydroxylamine and sulfenic acid. Either way, this is followed by the formation of the NOS bridge. The third option is the oxidation of the thiolate to sulfenic acid and then a sigmatropic 1-2 rearrangement driven by orbital steer. Calculations reveal that the second proposed mechanism is the most likely. No concerted OO bond breakage with a mononucleophilic attack like in the first mechanism has been observed. Also, sulfenic acid is too stable, so that no further reaction would occur. Therefore, the mechanism must involve a lower oxidation state of the cysteine. The NOS bridge in NGTAL regulates the enzyme activity by its redox state. 
The oxidized form of the enzyme possesses the NOS bridge and is inactive. The reduced form without crosslinking is active. This is likely due to an impact of the NOS formation on the structure of the active site. For example, the key catalytic residues as paragin 43 and aspartic acid 17 are getting slightly repositioned, as well as four catalytic water molecules. The catalytic lysine 138 forms a shift base intermediate with the substrate. It is disordered in the oxidized state, but becomes ordered with reduction. The cysteine residue of the NOS bridge is part of a strand-like structure that reaches from the protein surface all the way to its active site. The structural shift of the active site may be due to the movement of the strand. Now it would be nice to know if NOS bridges are solely a feature of NGTAL or closely related enzymes, or if they appear frequently. Fortunately, the researchers had the same thought and did a survey of the whole protein data bank. With regard to their search criteria, among others a resolution of less than 2 angstrom, 65,000 proteins remained. Of these, roughly 150 exhibited a possible NOS bridge. Besides intramolecular NOS bridges, different types of intermolecular bridges and Sonos bridges has been observed. The bridges can be within one strand or helix, between strands, within a loop, or there can be two parallel NOS bridges. NOS bridges also play a role in catalysis. In the KDPG aldolase, for example, the lysine forms an intermediate with the substrate, which isn't possible in the oxidized state. In other enzymes, the NOS bridges lysine participates in the CO2 transfer to biotin. There are also some proteins in which NOS bridges play a role in the binding of DNA or in histone methylation. So NOS bridges aren't a singular thing, but appear quite frequently in proteins. Yet the question of their biological significance in vivo remains. Do they just form in oxidizing conditions and are maybe a part of the many damages reactive oxygen species do to a cell? Or are they deliberately used as a regulation mechanism? What supports this assumption are the multiple examples of enzymes where the amino acids forming the bridge directly participate in catalysis as well. Also, the well-known redox-dependent activation of some genes fits nicely to the appearance of NOS bridges in DNA-binding proteins. Last but not least, the lysine cysteine pairs are highly conserved in different orthologs, suggesting a functional role of the motif. The second question we have to ask is what else is still out there? If we have overlooked the NOS bridges for so long, what else have we overlooked? It's not going to be something that completely overthrows our understanding of biochemistry. But maybe there are some things in the League of NOS bridges, still waiting for us to discover them. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to the channel. Thank you.